360. Policy, surface. Mine. Look out bearing, red 90. Angle of elevation, zero. 4060, low to the letterbox rank. Slow ahead both engines. Slow ahead both. 4060, low letterbox. 4060 gun crew, stand two. Target bearing, red 4-5. Range 500 yards. 4060, load, load, load. Load, load, load. Gun loaded, half cock. Aim a target. 4060, two rounds only. And game. What was that noise? I don't know, let's go and find out. 4060, two rounds only. Engage! 4060, check, 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 check. Cease firing. Stop. Stop both engines. Stop both engines, sir. Looks like a no-no. Yeah. I could have nicked it and she's gone to the bottom. Or snagged on a reef. Port 30. What do you think, Buffett? Hard to say, sir. Never went up. Could mean the explosive charge is US. Yeah. We mark its type. Oh, yeah, it's got to be the one. It's an old Japanese 88. Right. Can't take any chances. We're too close to commercial shipping lanes. I'll get a signal off to Comos Fleet for a clearance diving team. Uh, mark the position of the mine. Put down a datum marker and keep a sharp watch. We don't want it coming up underneath us. Huh. Damn thing's got a mind of its own. First it's seen here by a fishing boat, then by a freighter over here who just about runs under the reef trying to avoid it, and then over here, 30 miles away. Same mine. Well, I hope so. Wouldn't want to be chasing another one of them. Must have been in the water 35 years. Probably inactive by now. Yeah, well, I wouldn't bet on it. You better take a party ashore and secure the area. Right. Half ahead, both engines. Port 10, steer 290. Both engines, half ahead, sir. Yes? I want it back at base. What for? Something about a mine. A Japanese 88 up north. Japanese 88? Yes. You sure they want me? Yes. Surprise finding you all the way out here. I mean, just you and uh, your daughter. Uh, Tracy. Tracy. Yes, Tracy. Could you hold this on the bulkhead while I tighten the knot? Yes. Thank you. Spandock's been slipping for about a week. I have to take advantage of you while you're here. <laughs> now, what about the mine? Oh, that, that's quite a simple operation. We fly in a team of divers, they find the thing blown up. Uh -huh. Should just take a couple of days. Um, do you happen to know if there's anybody else in the area? Well, we've been here about three weeks. We haven't seen anybody. Mind you, it is a restricted tribal area. Hey, that's it. Oh, okay. I can offer you a beer. Oh, Mrs. Telford. Oh. Actually, uh, much as it pains me to have to refuse you, I'm afraid the sun's not yet over the yard arm. My name's Carol. I'm an anthropologist. Mine's Charles. I take it you're doing some sort of research around here. Yes, well, there's a cave at the foot of those cliffs with a lot of evidence of Aboriginal occupation. Really? I've been photographing the paintings and copying those that have deteriorated. And what's this? Oh, that's the rainbow serpent. Pretty powerful totem. 
There'll be an archaeological team here in a few weeks. Should be a really interesting dig. Oh, it's fascinating. Oh, right. Thanks very much. I should have set up camp closer to the spring. Oh, it's no trouble. It's no trouble at all. Can I go, please, for a ride in the warship? No, you cannot. We can't have girls on warships. We wouldn't get any work out of the crew. Girls aren't allowed anywhere. Not around here, anyway. This whole area is sacred ground, forbidden to women. Sometimes I think we're tempting fate by being here. Oh, we'll have a Kadaicha man after us. A Kadaicha man? What's that? Oh, a tribal vengeance man. Sounds a bit like our swain, doesn't it? One degree, of course, and you get the chopper. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yes, she's a very attractive woman. A bit inclined to be over serious, but very scenic. I wonder where Mr. Telford is. You were supposed to secure the area for the Navy, not yourself. Public relations, old bean. Anyway, she made me feel about 15 years old. <laughs> Had a reply from Commerce Fleet regarding the mine clearance situation. Both active diving groups are away on operation. But they have managed to put together a scratch team. The trouble is that they're one diver short. They suggest that perhaps with your qualifications you might like to fill in. How do you feel about that? Yes, I'd like that. If you don't feel fully confident, you can give it a miss. Oh, it's like riding a bike. Right, you're in. Who's leading the team? Uh, Chief Anson. Yep. Want to see me, boss? Uh, yes. The CD team is about to descend upon us. That means the ABs will have to squeeze up in the aft mess. Would you ask the Tiffy diplomatically? Would he mind moving in with them so that Chief Anson can bunk in with you in the swing? Anson? Bob Anson? Yeah, you know him. Well, he's not active. He's been put ashore. Well, not anymore, OK? But... You're right. And you better warn Borgia, too. What was all that about? I don't know. Stow your gear and then we'll bring you up to date, okay? Still doing things by the book? So you're still running a cruise ship, Bill? How are you? Oh, a little older, none the wiser. I know the man. As tough as they come. Join the Navy, meet Chief Anson. So? He pushes. He pushes till the break. You drop out, you make it. No frills. The famous Anson formula. Iron Man. What else? The formula failed. The inquiry exonerated him, mate. Whitewash. They made him non-operational, didn't they? Drop it, Ken. Good room for an old tough? Sure, mate. Lower bun. Coffee? Ah, uh, thanks. There's Ken. Long time. Yeah, it's been a while. Thought you were sailing on desk these days. Yeah, that's right. Be a bit hard, wouldn't it? Getting back in the diving? Well, I still remember a thing or two. Yeah, so do I. Come in. Well, come in, Borgia. Don't just stand there like a zombie. Fiddling. Ah. When do we get to Thursday Island? 
when this job's finished. Four extra mouths to feed, you know. It's not easy. You're beginning to sound like my missus. I'm not going to complain. I am not going to complain. What are you mumbling about? Do I ever complain? Do I ever ask for special treatment? Continually. Look, I'm as white as a ghost, man. Look, I've got rings under the eyes. Yeah. You leave that lemon essence alone. No. No, this is the crutch. When blokes you thought were your best mates start taking advantage of one little weakness, it's time to move on. I'm transferring out of patrol boats. What weakness? My uncle was a submariner. He used to put me to sleep with stories of mines scraping against the hull of his sub. Like... Well, well, we've got one of them things out there, right? We've been chasing it for a bloody week, but, but it's got nine lives. It thinks for itself, it's unreal. So I don't sleep. So I'm jumpy and I could have a heart attack. Get a tranquilizer from the first aid box. Chief Anson to the bridge. Yeah, I'm on my way. This whole section of the continental shelf is very dicey. I mean, the makeup of the reef and the headland causes some pretty funny currents. Might be hard to find. If, in fact, it's still around. Well, let's see how we'll find it, sir. There's five knots of tide at full flood and plenty of nice, sharp coral reef around. Well, we'll only work the hour before and after slack water. I'm a brutal on a portable shadow, sir. Good to be getting back to it. You've been a fair time away, I understand. I'm fully operationally qualified, sir. I've completed all refresher courses. Well, I'm sure you are. Otherwise, they would never have sent you. Well, sir, I'd like to confirm with you that while uh, Lieutenant Fisher's my superior officer, for the purpose of this exercise, he'll work to me as team leader. Will you confirm that, sir? Well, of course, Chief. That's, uh, that's understood. Yes, of course. Well, if that's all, sir, I'd like to do a reconnaissance swim in half an hour. It'll be slack water over in 91 minutes. That's all. What's eating him? Sounds like the old Navy. Still one or two of those about. What's his history, do you know? No. Arthur seems to know something. But why can't I help you? Well, we made a deal, remember? I let you help me yesterday, and today you have to do your schoolwork. Do I have to? Yes. You can tell me about the paintings the Aborigines did. No paintings. Sums. No. Yes, and no more back chat. The boat's coming. They're coming to take me for a ride. I don't think so. What are they doing then? They're looking for something. What? A mine. A gold mine? No. What then? I'll tell you later. Tell me now. Later. Shh. Is the rainbow serpent in today? No, not today. Well, we can go in then. Here's a case, darling. Thank you. Negative. Oh, you two will take a look on the bottom. Right. Ambush, Gemini. We're moving our position further and short. Roger, Gemini. Understood. Ambush, out. Well done, Robbie. I got that. Looks like they're going down on the reef. Wouldn't mind being there myself. Well, that big black thing waiting down there for me? No way. What's the chances they find it? Who knows? Could be anywhere. Yeah. Might even be under your galley, Bush. <laughs> Never met a sane cook yet. <laughs> They're all mad. Takes life pretty seriously, doesn't he? Borgia. Ah, uh, Chief Anson. Yeah. One of the old straightbacks, eh? Yeah. New Navy be too soft for Anson. Too specialised. This time you had to be an all-rounder. Work hard, booze hard, and sort your problems out the pub on Friday night. None of this psychological stuff for the chief. 
Seems like it died in the wool liner to me. There's a reason for that too, boss. He um, had a big setback a few years ago. Lost a diver on a training exercise. How? They say the kid panicked. There was an inquiry. Hanson was cleared. And he's had a desk job ever since. Must have been some doubt then, eh? You could say that. Both divers into the water. <laughs> plastic explosives to destroy the mine immediately before the tide floods over. Uh, right, and I'll be here. Acknowledge intentions. Gemini ambush, intention acknowledged. Ambush out. OK, let's go. Help me run it out. shouldn't be here. Where'd you come from? Tracy, where's your mother? In the cave. What the hell are you doing here? I work here. Am I doing something wrong? You could get yourselves blown up. This is a restricted area. We're blasting out there. Uh, I'm terribly sorry. I forgot to warn Pollock, you. Would you please clear the area? Uh, we just found this mine sooner. Would you mind moving out? It shouldn't take long. Oh. Come on, so strong, Chief. I don't want the accidents on this job, sir. All right, come on, let's get it finished. Fire is on. Roger. She's away, sir. Right, warn the crew. He's a bloody albatross, mate. He'll end up killing somebody else before he's finished. I'm not listening, Ken. Hello? 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 
You won't shout at me, will you? No. That's good. I'm supposed to be doing arithmetic, but I'd rather go for a ride in your boat. Would you? Mum let me go. You don't have to ask her. It's all right. I think you're a bit of a con man. What's that? Well, someone who's smart. Someone who could probably sell ice to the Eskimos. <laughs> Where is your mum? In the cave. Would you take me there? What? Listen. The rainbow serpent says you can come in. He likes you because you're a man. Mummy, here's the man that shouted, but he won't anymore. Hello. What is it? Well, what does it look like? It's the cave of the rainbow serpent. Look, I don't even know your name, but I want to apologize for the way I spoke to you. We were under pressure. I'm sorry. I'm Carol Telford. Bob Anson. Actually, it's my first job in quite a while. I wanted it to go right. I know the feeling. Have you finished your arithmetic? Nearly. Off you go. But, Mum... Now. I'll have a ride in your boat later. Got a mind of her own, that one. Hmm. She misses her father. He died of a heart attack. He was under a lot of pressure, too. Well, when will you blow up the mine? Tomorrow morning. Slack water flood. If it hasn't shifted. It probably will. It's a strange part of the coast. Some of the local Aboriginal legends talk about sea monsters, that sort of thing. I guess the reefs and tides must have thrown up some pretty odd creatures. Sea monsters? You don't believe in them? No. The only monsters are in our minds. Have you seen them? Yeah, on a night dive. Well, we've been 100, 150 foot down. Pitch black and you don't know which way's up. Totally disorientated. Mine can play some funny tricks. Then you see things. But you've got to beat it. Panic down there and you're dead. It's discipline. You've got to do what you fear the most. If you can. I'm sorry, I must be boring you to death. Not at all. Why don't you take Tracy for a ride in the boat? What the hell is Anson doing? He's roaring around out there with a the little girl on the boat. Isn't that against regulation? Little girl having fun? <laughs> it sure is. Well, that's okay. Comes under public relations. Well, my love, you've had a busy day. Not much schoolwork done. Tomorrow. Always tomorrow. I'm going for another ride. Mr. Anson say so. No. But if you have anything to do with it, he will. <laughs> He's stern, isn't he? Stern? Oh, I suppose so. Why is he? I don't know. Perhaps he's not used to girls. The rainbow serpent likes him. What a funny thing to say. He doesn't like us because we're women. Oh, what nonsense. Let's see. What's a mine? Old people use them to sink ships. Whatever for? Well, in the war. Oh, are we at war? No, of course not. That's good. <laughs> Night, darling. Mm -hmm. 
Good night. Another hot one. Thanks, Dave. blow it up where it is. Well, you can't explode it there. I'm sorry, Mrs. Telford, but we don't seem to have much alternative. If we wait for high tide and tow it out to sea again, it might very well explode anyway. It's definitely the safest and quickest way. No. What about the cave? Mrs. Telford, that mine's been in the water for nearly 40 years. What do you think that does to explosive? It's temperamental. You could probably hit one of those horns with a hammer and it wouldn't go up. But someone brushes against it, trying to get a rope around it. They could be blown to pieces. Sorry, but that's the way it is. Better take this, ma'am. It'll settle your nerves a bit. I'm going to make one for you, too. Would you like it in milk? Yuck. No milk. Lemonade, please. Lemonade. 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 I think you're on the con again, young lady. Oh, no. You'll steal that table forever and destroy the painting. You'll just have to find some other way. Those paintings are priceless. Well, they're not exactly Rembrandt's. Well, you don't know that. The cave is sacred, central to Aboriginal belief. It's the place of the Rainbow Serpent, the protecting spirit of all Aborigines. 
Mrs. Telford, that's primitive superstition. Not to them. Not to me. Well, you can't expect us to put men's lives at risk just because of that. Mr. Anson, when the pyramids were built, the Aborigines had already been using that cave for centuries. Oh, we've been here 200 years. What sort of rights do you think we have? Mrs. Telford, would you leave this thing with us for a while? Let's see what we can do. The issue could become a political football. And when that happens, everybody in Canberra ducks for cover and leaves the Navy out in a limb. Now, I don't want to put the service in a position where it has to defend itself against every black pressure group in the country howling for blood. Anyway, those cave paintings are probably, as Mrs. Telford says, artistically very significant. What's the chance of making that thing harmless? I mean, defusing it. Could you do it? I don't have the authority, sir. In strict accordance with Navy regulations, it requires an ordnance trained officer. Well, I suppose we'd better do it by the book. We'll get a signal off to knock. Fly some of those blokes in. Me also? Yeah, that's it. By the way, Chief. Well done, Maggie. So. You too, X. I'm still shaking. Well, how the mighty have fallen. Everything grinds to a halt and we wait for the experts. Nine man Anson sitting up there like little orphan Annie. What do you expect him to do? Strip that mine and Tim and his flatmate. It's against regulations, mate. Regulations? It's just an easy way out. Now Albatross has lost his nerve. You know Anson, Ken. He's doing it by the book. He relates to rules. Oh, yeah, he's great with the rules. Just a disaster for people. Mrs. Telford? I couldn't keep away from it either. It's an evil thing. Tell me about it. It's a Japanese Type 88. Put down off the coast of New Guinea sometime during the war. It's been there for about 35 years. Then it moved. Why? Probably rusted through the moorings. You talked about phantoms in the mind when you're on the night dive, how you had to face them. Well, I'm trying to face mine, but I think I need some help. Tracy and I are the only women to enter that cave in hundreds of years, Mr. Anson. It was taboo. This whole area is forbidden to women. And you're frightened? Not at first. I'm a rational, reasonably intelligent woman. All those years. Too many ghosts. Too much magic. When the taboo is broken or vengeance is needed, they send a Kadaicha man. Kadaicha man? A vengeance man. They kill by fear. The magic is very strong. There is no defense. The Kadaicha man will come. Most times he comes as a crow, sometimes as a snake or a lizard. He can come in any shape or form. But he can come as anything. Mrs. Telford, that mine was made in Kobe or Yokohama, 1942. The people who made it left their fingerprints all over the insides of it. Human beings who never heard of Aborigines. It came here, to this place, the very mouth of that cave. It tried to kill my daughter. Look, I don't know about Kodachi men. But I do know about a half a ton of high explosive. With a fuse system so tricky, I'm frightened to even think about it. And please don't talk to me about your families. Because every night I see a 20-year-old kid 
telling me he was too frightened to go down on a night dive. And I forced him down there. That kid died. Well, he panicked and tore out his mouthpiece. But it burnt me out, lady. And I've done five years on the beach because of it. I just don't want to make any decisions that affect people's lives. I can understand your feeling on this, Chief, but quite frankly, I think it's better if we stick to the original plan. Sir, when the tide's up, that timber won't hold it. The slightest movement could set it off. The regulations are quite clear on this. Now, you said so yourself. We can't wait, sir. There's a reason for the regulation, Chief. You know it as well as I do. The reason is men's lives, and I'm not about to risk yours. I can do it. No, I'm sorry. That's it. Regulations. Yeah, well, the boss ordered me not to. But I'm going to do it. So you're going to be a hero? No. We are. Because I need help. And I reckon your big mouse made you a volunteer. OK, let's start. Twenty-two millimeter wrench. Remove cover plate assembly with the exception of one bolt. Scared? You know, they're probably court martial the both of us. If we're successful. If not, it won't matter much. Four bolts out but one. Slide cover plate in clockwise direction until access into the interior is possible. You know, there's just a slight chance. This thing could be light sensitive. Next. Reach into mine case. Cut leads of nearest torn at base. Got us. Extend leads outside case and tape.
Well, that's it. Not yet. You're not off the hook yet. Read the next section. When we get out of this, I'm going to belt your bloody head in, pal. <laughs> cut the black wire. Black wire cut. Cut the blue wire. Blue wire. What's that? Booby trap. We'll start on the time, please. Leave the bastard. Read the next section. Read it! Get down! Cut the red and black wire. Together! Now what? Wait five seconds. Finished. The Kadachi man's dead. Will you get into trouble? Who cares? <laughs> Half ahead, both engines. Stop at 10, steer 345. I'm ahead, both, sir. Yeah, three, four, five. This message just came in. Clearance diving officer unavailable. Imperative you protect Aboriginal heritage. Suggest Chief Anson use his own discretion. Final 50 revs, both engines. 